could 30 billion SpongeBobs beat Goku? 30 billion. That's around four times the population of our entire planet in SpongeBobs. This question was originally a video from Watch Fiction called How Many SpongeBobs to Defeat, where the creator just puts random arbitrary numbers of SpongeBobs to defeat certain characters in fiction and decided it'd take 30 billion exactly to defeat Goku, which generated obviously a lot of memes of Goku versus 29 billion SpongeBobs being a stomp and the 30 billionth one making it a complete stomp in the SpongeBob's favor. While these are clearly memes, you gotta wonder just a little, could they actually though? The answer honestly was a lot more interesting than I originally thought, so enjoy. Before we begin this video, I would like to tell you about something that is honestly super helpful and way more convenient, and that is NordVPN. Do you ever get on a website and something gets blocked because you're in a different country? Or maybe you just generally feel unsafe when browsing the internet, knowing that nearly every website steals things from you and data? Well, that's where NordVPN comes in and changes that for you. At NordVPN.com slash SetTheProgrammer, not only does it give you all those benefits, but when using NordVPN, and your internet doesn't even suffer. So if you want to switch countries and watch that show you couldn't find on Netflix in your own country, you still have the same internet speed. Multiple devices can use it and you safely secure your IP and mask it to stop any attacks and NordVPN being the best option for a VPN has given me a deal for you. At NordVPN slash SetTheProgrammer, you can get Nord and it's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. And if you get a two year plan, you also get four additional months free. Enjoy browsing safely and content which you usually can't access without NordVPN. Thank you. The first thing we should establish first before we go over how strong are 30 billion SpongeBobs is how strong is one SpongeBob? I can't believe I'm saying this. Uh, then we can move on from there. SpongeBob is an interesting character as obviously he is more of a gag character that uses Toon Force often that seems to make him randomly absurd to the point he could suck up the entire ocean and turn as big as the moon in an instant or run from a random warp inside of the same ocean he literally just destroyed. Getting punched by Flats the Flounder and taking absolutely zero damage because he's a sponge, being able to rip himself in half and immediately regenerate like nothing happened in a flash when he takes his pants off, I'm not joking, to being shown getting black eyes later. It seems somewhat inconsistent but what if I told you it might not actually be. Many characters in SpongeBob and even just the main characters in gag cartoons in general have a very special power, which is they almost always seem to have the ability to do whatever they think they can. Think they can is important because if the characters don't think they can, do something or they get scared, they suddenly can't do that thing they were literally just doing. Characters running on air, then realizing they're running on nothing, then fall immediately. Squidward being unable to breathe without seawater, but then when he's in a void of nothingness that clearly doesn't have water in it, he just doesn't care because he's not really thinking about it. SpongeBob is no different. Take him making a fire underwater being so different in so many scenes. So the mindset of SpongeBob is actually a huge factor when it comes down to him facing Goku, which I'll get into soon. Now that we've established the reason for SpongeBob's fluctuating power, let's actually go over the things he's done with said fluctuating powers. Some lesser things he's done are such as him sucking in the entire ocean in an instant, to the point that he actually absorbs the ocean so fast that the energy to suck in that much water in around one to two seconds. Remember, the ocean is massive, weighing 1.347 by 10 to the 21 kilograms and being larger than all the land mass on Earth, with the entire Earth itself weighing 4.8 septillion kilograms. SpongeBob absorbed this entire ocean in a second, resulting in many people speculating that the energy to sap up that much water that fast and make it disappear and condense into a, such a small area would require as much energy as it would to detonate an entire planet beyond its gravitational binding energy. 
This is highly consistent as well because SpongeBob does this again, but he doesn't just fit the whole ocean in his leaf blower. By the way, these leaf blowers can be mass produced and bought whenever, by the way, but absorbs so much water, he becomes as big as the literal moon and actually replaces it outright, which once again, he does in a matter of seconds and will require him to absorb the ocean at a speed at a few percentages of the speed of light. But as I said before, those are his really low end feats. You have plankton picking up our atoms to create nuclear explosions or Patrick getting a brain freeze so intense it froze the entire earth for thousands of years but Spongebob goes a step beyond that season 11 episode 25 is an entire episode dedicated to a gag based around how pulling loose strings on clothes ruins them to the point that Spongebob literally starts destroying everything at Bikini Bottom from a string he pulls off of Squidward's shirt. The string pulls apart armor, buildings, and eventually at the end of the episode, the string goes up a fishing line attached to an actual three-dimensional person. The string then erases the person from existence and SpongeBob proceeds to massacre the rest of Bikini Bottom by erasing an island and the entire ocean from existence. But SpongeBob doesn't just stop there. He eventually goes into outer space and while we see an entire galaxy, he just yanks it into nothing. But not only the galaxy seems to disappear, so does all the space around it as well. There are no stars or anything visible as SpongeBob pretty much seems to erase everything that was visible before into a white void. If space and time are linked, this also means he likely erased time as well and was just walking around in it. Shortly after, Patrick pulls a string off of SpongeBob and not only erases him, but the entire reality slaying string and then flosses his teeth with it like nothing happened. This gives us a very similar picture to the Omni King Zeno from Dragon Dragon Ball Super, who after waving away an entire timeline is just floating around in a white void of nothing. Zeno is stronger than Goku, so if SpongeBob did something similar, then even one should be enough to beat Goku, right? Well, not exactly. What Zeno did was erase an entire timeline that contained dozens of universes and massive spaces in between them. SpongeBob is arguably destroying one universe if you are very generous, and some people will just grandstand that he only destroyed a galaxy even though I don't think that was the intent of the scene. I mean, why have everything go white if he's only destroying the galaxy? That doesn't really make sense. But either way, what Zeno did is still way superior. Goku in Battle of Gods also was going to turn a macrocosm to non-existent by punching a god who was suppressing himself to Goku's level, and these macrocosms are massive and not only consist of an endless universe, but an even larger afterlife that makes universes vanish in its skies. So even then, Goku still has a bit more going on at the start of even Super, but that Spongebob feat, considering in One Punch Man they thought destroying some stars in the background was impressive, Spongebob might make Saitama shit his pants. But Spongebob isn't done yet. Before we get into Spongebob's other feats, I think this is a good chance to segue into Spongebob's speed. As I just went over, Spongebob possibly erased time and space entirely, and if he was moving around in a spaceless and timeless white void, then that would mean he could possibly have been moving at a level of infinite speed. Not joking, as moving without time completely cracks the speed formula, speed being measured as speed equals distance divided by time. If there is no time but distance, since this would have to be infinite, with some arguing it'd be even higher level of speed known as inaccessible speed. This may be consistent if you consider the famous episode of SpongeBob in season one known as SB129, where Squidward goes inside a time machine to travel to the future and the past, and in desperation to get away from everyone and be alone, breaks the machine entirely in ascent to a white void, which Squidward calls nothing. Squidward himself seems to think this outside the past, present, and future, and maybe outside of time entirely. However, if you want to be really skeptical, the official SpongeBob SquarePants YouTube channel describes the scene as Squidward simply getting knocked into a nether dimension rather than into a void outside of all of time and space. Likewise, SpongeBob's string scene could only be erasing what we saw in front of us rather than all of time space as well. Goku is able to move around in a similar situation where he goes to get the Omni King in his erased timeline. Many are confused how they traveled back to the Omni King if the timeline was erased. However, you could simply argue that the time machine opens up and leaves a wormhole tunnel that it travels through to reach certain points. 
These wormholes are how Fuse Zamasu seems to travel back to the past in the anime, and it's probably how they went back into the future as well. There are other scenes, however, of characters like Jiren straight up surpassing the concept of time with his movement against Hit in the words of gods, characters surpassing instantaneous movements during the Granola arc, as well as characters potentially surpassing instant movement back in the Buu saga, as when Kid Buu blew up Earth, Kibito Kai does a technique called Kai Kai, back to his realm, Kai Kai being an instantaneous blip to any location, and Kid Buu blows up Earth before they can instantaneously blip to his planet despite how it's described. Either way, it's pretty easy to either deny or grant both a similar level of speed, but both can actually potentially go a step beyond that especially Spongebob. Goku's potentially higher feat is of course in his battle against Hit, where he potentially is fighting Hit on a level that lets him fight him as he skips into the future, possibly granting a minor form of immeasurable speed as fighting beings that go through time with speed alone would break the speed formula entirely. Spongebob 2 has something similar in an episode called Dunstans and Dragons in Season 4, and in this episode Spongebob and Patrick are put into a medieval jousting match and during this the horses they are riding actually hit them away so hard and fast it sends them flying to a medieval bikini bottom where SpongeBob has to go on a basically Dungeons and Dragons like quest. This could be them being launched back in time, and if so, these horses either just broke all of time space to do this, or hit them so fast it just sent them back in time on some old school turn back the earth by flying Superman movie level feet. However, one thing to know is that on the actual YouTube buy description, which is the official description for the product by the license holders, it is stated they are simply transported to a medieval version of Bikini Bottom rather than back in time. Personally, I'd say they just got launched back in time, but that is something you could say. It also makes you wonder how Spongebob and Patrick actually scale to the seahorses that launched them, although you could say they could scream and flail around from the launch, implying they can move around while being launched at potentially immeasurable speeds, as goofy as that sounds. Likewise, Hit's feet is not so concrete or accepted either, with many people thinking Goku probably was overpowering Hit's hack's ability to paralyze people, then becoming immeasurable in speed, which is why he wasn't breaking the time skip until he got a very linear 10 times times increase to his speed, which doesn't make any sense for that to equate to beyond infinite speed increases. It also makes less sense when the feat Jiren does later in Super is then considered beyond time, but what Goku does apparently way earlier isn't, and in the manga it is literally just him overpowering Hit's paralysis hacks as well. While Seth, both Spongebob and Goku have some arguable speed feats that could put them higher than the other if you take it charitably or not but Goku's still pretty much just objectively stronger, right? Not exactly. SpongeBob still has something up his sleeve. How smart is Patrick? I mean, honestly, how smart is he? Of course, we know that when Patrick plugs his brain and becomes hyper intelligent with the whole episode being based around it, but when he unplugs his brain, does it actually really all go away? Well, Kind of. But perhaps some vestiges are left behind. A good example of this, did you know Patrick is actually the only person in pretty much the entire series to acknowledge the parallel universes exist within mirrors. SpongeBob actually tries denying this after Patrick brings it up, but we are immediately confirmed Patrick is in fact correct. Looking into another mirror does in fact create a nether universe and reality entirely. And in fact, in SpongeBob, there seems to be all kinds of alternate realities that even 2D things seem to spawn into or from. Take for instance, this guy on Mr. Krabs dollar bill coming to life and running from SpongeBob's string in the string episode. Not only do these things Things seem to spawn in mirrors or drawings, etc., but SpongeBob can actually interact with them. Take for instance in season two, an episode called Something Smells, where SpongeBob, who has extremely bad breath, actually discusses and affects a reflection in the mirror. These dimensions have also even attacked Patrick and even create monstrous images and so forth. But Seth, what is the significance? Why do we even care if Patrick is right? Are we gonna argue that SpongeBob's string ripped apart a bunch of alternate universes because of mirrors? Well, maybe. Not a bad idea, actually. But no, in season two, episode 23, the episode almost right after 22A, something smells by the way, SpongeBob asks Patrick what is a goal of his, in which he gives a pretty popular line. I want to defeat the giant monkey man and save the ninth dimension! In which SpongeBob replies, that might be a little hard. Think smaller. And Patrick then says, 
I want to defeat the little monkey man and save the eighth dimension with a lot less enthusiasm. If Patrick actually does have good cosmological awareness, then this ninth and eighth dimension may actually exist. The ninth dimension is also mentioned by Bubble Buddy in a video game as well. And while we don't know exactly how SpongeBob and Patrick can interact with a higher dimension, albeit SpongeBob doesn't seem to think it's impossible apparently, there's also something that pretty objectively could that's called the magic book. The magic book is a book that contains the whole story of SpongeBob. By interacting with and altering this book, characters can rewrite reality with it, considering there are multiple universes, possibly infinite using the comics, and potentially up to the ninth dimension. You can see how this book could be utterly broken if it could work the way it does in Dragon Ball that it does in SpongeBob. Considering Goku is at most a three or fourth dimensional being, if you consider him being able to destroy the dimensional space that holds 3D universes together as higher dimensional. Even the most upscaled giga wanked versions of Goku only cap off at fifth or sixth dimensional and those are using some very disagreeable methods for the most part. The magic book would potentially be able to erase Goku even then but this is highly questionable as it could just sort of be like an infinity gauntlet situation where some infinity gauntlets only work in the fiction or universe it is made in just as an example. The last thing Spongebob has is the pencil. You know, the one that Doodle Bob uses that can sort of just erase everything like it's a drawing. Would this have an omnipotent gag power and just erase Goku? Potentially, but we've never seen the pencil actually erase anything too absurd and with the string actually doing more funny enough. Goku is also somewhat of a pseudo gag character himself. You have to remember in original Dragon Ball, Goku was actually a gag character, smashing manga panels, putting rabbits on the moon alongside Krillin and many others. And this is why when he fights an absurdly strong gag character named Arale, he seems to be actually pretty pitched with her rather than getting utterly blown out like Vegeta was. With gag powers not even working on some characters like Beerus, the God of Destruction. So even the pencil's usage is actually kind of questionable but with 30 billion Spongebobs and all the crazy things he could whip out, the pencil, breaking time and space, the magic book, eventually a few Spongebobs are going to put something crazy together. Well, assuming they all don't think Goku would beat them and Goku just becomes super bloodlusted and out of character and obliterates them all in an instant or something. But in character, things would probably get really insanely hard for Goku and I wouldn't be surprised if eventually Goku actually does get bamboozled by something as their versatility is just insane. Goku's weaknesses include the need for oxygen, which can easily work in Spongebob's favor as well. Nah, I'm just kidding. Spongebob would just one-tap Goku with a karate chop. Thanks for watching.